identifying exactly what is it we're trying to change in our classroom. What's the gap between where we envisage students were going to be and where they are now? It doesn't have to be a deficit model. It could be where are students now and where do we think we'd like them to go even further? How will, you know if they, how will we know if we've made a difference as we investigate this? What approach are we going to take? Draw on the research? Engage with different organisations to figure out what are the best ways to do this? Collaboratively planning lessons? Uh, perhaps predicting what we think is going to happen, because then we'll be very attentive to what actually happens. Reflecting, replan uh, reflecting on that. And then at the end, reflecting carefully, how effective has that been? Do we need to go back to the beginning again? Now this sort of collaborative teacher inquiry model can be extremely effective. And, uh, and many of the sort of uh, research syntheses in this area identify teacher inquiry as being particularly uh, effective at improving student outcomes. Um, I think starting with the intervention in, in is actually, starting with the outcome in mind is actually something we don't do enough. So once we've said, hey, I think some of our underachieving year eight girls don't understand angles well enough. Let's try a peer tutoring approach. And we start with a nice clear research question, which is usually one of the hardest bits actually, coming up with a nice clear question. And then we'll think about how will we evaluate the difference we've made. Perhaps we'll try some SATS questions before and after we've tried something and maybe during. We'll do some lesson observation and actually watch and describe what's happening. We'll interview pupils. Maybe we'll also ask all the students to go on to you know, some online thing like Sam Learning and evaluate. Lots of different methods of evaluating the impact we're having because that rich information will formatively help us do inquiry in a more effective way. Love lesson study, be very brief. Planning lessons together, focusing on three students rather than everyone. Um, teaching the lesson together. Observing those three students in the context of the class. Did they do what we think they do? Ask the students about their experiences and then reflect together. And it takes a lot of time and it's actually undergoing, undergoing some uh, really large scale randomised control trials at the moment through the National College Test and Learn programme, through the Education Endowment Foundation. But it maps very closely to what we know makes a really effective professional learning. I, I'm, I'm going to be surprised if that turns out to be an ineffective in, uh, approach. Lesson study has a lot of those things that make you think, yeah, actually that is going to make you think deeply and reconceptualise what happens. So what we're doing about it briefly, the Teach Development Trust, we're saying if you are going to get brief input, if you are going to go on courses of consultancy, we'd like to help you find what's really effective. So uh, we are, we've got like a TripAdvisor style database really of CDP. The more people write reviews on there, the more effective it gets. Um, and the more uh, we're trying to work with providers, we've been working alongside Cure to work with providers to try and help them up their game. Um, and then finally we run a network of schools who are really engaged in great professional learning. Uh, so we do things like help them audit each other in terms of what's the quality of professional learning going on. Uh, we give them access to some support around lesson study. They're in a community of lots of schools doing lesson study giving them access to lots of research papers, helping them evaluate the impact, and so on. But ultimately, we need to really change the way we think about spreading knowledge around the system and moving away from, let's disseminate it as an afterthought or sharing good practice. I've spoken for a little too long. We have a whole three minutes of questions. <laughs> Any questions? Yes. Do you think there's anywhere where there is a bottleneck in the system for this? Is this something that's stopping it at some point, whether from the top or from the bottom, or is it something that's dispersed all the way through? Oh, there are all sorts of reasons why great professional learning doesn't happen. Time is one of the biggest ones. Teachers don't have the time, partly because school leaders don't necessarily see it as a priority. So actually, when you're in a school where they actually see it as a priority, and they're not asking you to do just more marking and more planning, and actually go maybe a bit less marking and planning, a bit less teaching, and a bit more professional learning, might be more effective. There are all sorts of reasons why it doesn't happen though. Access to some of the research, uh, the culture, people not knowing how to talk to each other effectively. Goodness, there are lots of reasons. But that, that sounds a lot like it's the top level management in schools from what you're suggesting. Uh, I think there, are, there is a lot about the management of the leadership of our schools, partly responding to the pressure above them, but partly also the culture which we have as teachers in our schools and the way we talk to each other or don't. So I'm not going to put it all on its SLT, because actually I think as practitioners we can potentially engage in our own professional learning in better ways as well. But it's very difficult to do that if you've got an unsupported leadership team. That's fudging a bit, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yes? So Tom, I mean, some of what role does the accountability system play in this 
incentivizing the deep engagement with proper or yeah. um, Worst issue is, is a lesson great? I will observe, does it look great? We want lessons to look great, make them look great. So actually you just train teachers to make the lessons look great and you don't, that doesn't encourage at all people mm -hmm. to engage in the deep thinking, looking at individual pupils. It's just do stuff that looks good. Um, as Matt, uh, Matt O'Leary was saying earlier, actually, that's one of the huge problems we've got, actually, that the accountability does not incentivize you to really deeply change your thinking. They just want to make it look good. But then, you know, changes are coming in terms of lesson observations, I think. Whether we might go from the frying pan to the fire, I don't know. Anyone else? Great. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.